That Reef Show. That Reef Show. That Reef Show. This is That Reef Show. This segment is about the Aquamax Cones Q2 protein skimmer, but I can't adequately convey to you how much I love this skimmer without backing up a bit. The basics of a protein skimmer don't change that much. Let's take these three as an example. The Bubble Magus Curve 5, the SCA 302, and the Aquamax NF-1 Nano. They all have a collection cup an air silencer, some sort of adjustment valve, a Venturi-style air pump, and a bubble diffuser. And every protein skimmer works on the same basic principle by creating micro bubbles that organics are attracted to and pushing them up into a collection cup whereby you can remove them. But then why are there so many different brands and variations to consider? Well, that's because every hobbyist need is slightly different, so there are various options to consider. For example, do you want an AC pump or a DC pump? Most skimmers probably just come with an AC pump, but DC pumps do run a little bit more quietly and they offer the option of a controller so you can really tune the water height to exactly what you want. You might want a more compact skimmer where the pump is housed in the body of the skimmer itself. But if you have a larger area and you move that pump outside of the skimmer body, you're allowing a larger reaction chamber so that more organics can be filtered out. And depending on what kind of filtration you even have, you can get skimmers that go in a sump, that hang off the side of your display tank, or that are small enough to be placed in your rear filtration chamber. Next, you need to consider the size of the skimmer itself. What is its footprint? What is the height? Will it fit in your chamber? Will it fit under your display tank? And then what is the water height in the sump itself? Because while it's easy to place some sort of stand underneath the skimmer, you really can't lower a skimmer down. And lastly, for some hobbyists, the size of the collection cup really matters. Obviously, what skimmer you end up going with is gonna depend on your build and what your needs are. But over the years with various skimmers that I've experienced, here are some of the most annoying things that I've noticed and that you might wanna consider before purchasing or upgrading to a new skimmer. The first is micro bubbles escaping. I've had skimmers that have released so many micro bubbles, even after months of use, that I've had to install elaborate bubble traps just to keep them out of my display tank. Number two is noise. Not every pump is made the same and not every skimmer is constructed the same, so some are just noisier than others. Number three is size. The fourth most annoying issue when it comes to skimmers that I faced is a skimmer cup that is difficult to remove. So many of them are constructed in such a way that the only way to get the skimmer cup off is to put your hand inside and wiggle it back and forth, and oftentimes it pops off, spilling that disgusting skimmate either on yourself or back into the tank. The fifth and final most annoying characteristic of skimmers that I've experienced over the years is a skimmer that is difficult or nearly impossible to tune just right. Either it's too wet, it's too dry, it doesn't skim anything, or it's overflowing almost constantly. Read the reviews of skimmers you're looking at and find one that is easy to tune. Aquamax sells hang on the back style skimmers. They also sell a line of nano skimmers, which can fit in small tanks in a rear filtration chamber. And then they sell three types of in sump skimmers in various sizes. This is the Aquamax Cones Q2 protein skimmer. It comes with an Italian made CJ Shark needle wheel pump, an air intake silencer, cell cast acrylic construction, shock max rubber feet, highly adjustable outlet for pinpoint accuracy, a collection cup that screws on and has a handle, 
It's rated for up to 130 gallons with a heavy bio load, and it comes with a recommended water level of eight inches. I've had this Aquamax Cones skimmer up and running for two weeks now, so here's my honest review. First up, there was virtually no break in time. There are oftentimes little oils or things that come inside of a skimmer and it usually takes a couple weeks to really break it in so you're fighting with it overflowing or not being high enough. But this thing, honestly, I had it opened all the way, set it and forget it, and I haven't really had to touch it, which is amazing, actually. My second point is I have had zero bubbles, no joke, zero bubbles escape into the display tank. And, and it's no accident that no micro bubbles have escaped. It's how they designed the skimmer with the water exit exiting at the very bottom of the skimmer and the chamber being tall enough so that the bubbles stay near the top and don't escape. Point number three is that the gate valve they installed on the Aquamax skimmer is super easy to turn and makes micro adjustments so you can really dial in whether you want a wet skimmate or a dry skimmate. Point number four is it's crazy easy to clean the skimmate cup, the collection cup, because it comes with a handle. Something so simple really changes the overall experience and makes this super easy to clean. And point number five, that the skimmate cup in the Aquamax Cones skimmer screws off instead of pulls off makes a huge difference. I've owned five skimmers now over my career and I can say without hesitation, the Aquamax Cone SQ2 skimmer that I have here is hands down the best skimmer I've ever owned. First, you want to remove the plastic body screws from the base plate. Next, you're going to attach the CJ pump to the plastic base plate using this little plastic piece that's included. I don't know what to call that plastic piece, so we're just gonna call it a plastic doohickey or doodad. It's pretty self-explanatory. You just have to screw it into the base plate. Next up, we're gonna attach the bubble plate to the CJ Shark needle wheel pump. There's just a couple screws you're gonna tighten. Make sure they're snug, but don't over tighten them as it is plastic, so it could break. Next up, after aligning the power cord in the base plate, reattach the skimmer body to the base plate with the included plastic screws that you already removed. Now you're gonna insert the Venturi through the skimmer body into the CJ Shark pump and attach the yellow airline tubing. Finally, attach the silicone drain elbow to the collection cup and secure it with the included zip tie. Then just attach the collection cup and lid by gently tightening it to the skimmer base. This week's word of the week is RODI filtration. I spent the last four hours researching and writing the script and normally I like to memorize it, but RODI filtration is full of so much jargon that I'm just gonna read the script so mea culpa in advance. And if you are a chemistry nerd, you know who you are, please leave a comment below correcting all of my scientific inaccuracies. All right, here we go, RODI filtration. RODI filtration stands for reverse osmosis deionization filtration. At its most simple level, an RODI filter removes contaminants from water, resulting in pure H2O. But how does it work? Most RODI filters have four unique stages. The first stage is a sediment filter, which removes visible particulate matter. It's just like a sponge filter in any aquarium. It lets water pass through but catches large suspended particles like food, waste, and debris. A standard one micron filter will remove particles greater than a micron, while a 0.5 micron filter is more dense and filters out even smaller particles. The second stage is a carbon filter, which while removing visible particulate matter, goes beyond to remove chlorine, volatile organic compounds or VOCs, odors, and unpleasant tastes from the water. Okay, a lot of you probably already knew that, so let's dig deeper and explain how it works. 
Activated carbon is charcoal that's been treated with oxygen to create a wide open pore structure between the carbon atoms. It uses a filtration process called chemical adsorption, not absorption, but chemical adsorption. Basically, as water passes through the highly porous charcoal, certain impurities become trapped slash chemically bonded to the carbon. While carbon filtration is great at removing chlorine, VOCs, odors, and tastes from the water, it is not effective at removing dissolved compounds, salts, or minerals, hence the need for further filtration in an RODI system. The third stage, reverse osmosis, is a bit more confusing to understand. First off, we need to understand what osmosis is. Simply defined, osmosis is the process whereby water molecules travel through a semi-permeable membrane from an area of lower to higher solute concentrations. The easiest way I understand this is to think about human sweat. How does the water pass through your skin? Well, it uses osmosis. A little bit of salt is deposited in your sweat glands and through osmosis, water passes through your skin, which is a semi-permeable membrane, and toward the area with a higher salt concentration. Why does water act this way? We can think about it in two ways, physical size and ionic charge. First, if we visualize the semi-permeable membrane, the openings are only big enough for water molecules to pass through. So larger molecules are stuck on one side or the other. Physically speaking, if a solution only contained pure H2O, those water molecules would be zooming back and forth between the membrane in equal amounts. But when you add a larger solute to one side of the semi-permeable membrane, let's use salt as an example, those larger compounds could block the semi-permeable membrane from time to time, meaning the small water molecules would not be able to travel through that membrane. Not only that, but water molecules will be bumping into the larger salt compounds, thus reducing their overall chance of passing through the membrane. Both of these factors result in a net movement of water from one side without salt to the side with salt. The second way to understand osmosis of water molecules is through ionic charges. Salt, when dissolved in water, breaks down into a positively charged sodium ion and a negatively charged chloride ion. Water is a polar molecule, meaning there is a partial negative charge on the oxygen atom and a partial positive charge distributed between the two hydrogen atoms. So the negatively charged oxygen atom in a water molecule is attracted to the positively charged sodium ion, while the positively charged hydrogen atoms are attracted to the negatively charged chloride ion. Thus, there is again a net movement of water molecules through the semi-permeable membrane from the side without salt to the side with salt. So if you think about this relating to purifying water, osmosis wouldn't do a thing. That's because the natural tendency of water is to move toward the larger ions, molecules, and particles. So you would have the clean water moving towards the dirty water. This is where reverse osmosis comes in. It applies external water pressure to reverse this process, thus forcing the smaller water molecules through a semi-permeable barrier thus separating water from the larger ions, molecules, and particles. Thus, reverse osmosis produces more pure water because only it can pass through the semi-permeable membrane. Reverse osmosis membranes can remove up to 99% of impurities in water, such as salt, particulate matter, lead, and many other chemicals. The last stage of an RODI filtration system is deionization resin which compared to reverse osmosis is a little bit easier to understand. By the time your water reaches the DI resin, it is likely 99% clean, but not quite there yet. Whereas an RO membrane is a kind of mechanical filtration, DI resin is a chemical filter. Deionization removes both organic and inorganic ionized minerals and salts through a process of ion exchange. Basically, DI resin removes total dissolved solids, or TDS, from the water by use of ion exchange resins. So how does this work exactly? DI filtration contains both a positively charged cation resin and a negatively charged anion resin. Let's say there is a little bit of dissolved salt, which is Na plus Cl negative, or NaCl, in your product water. As that water passes over the positively charged cation resin, 
the positively charged sodium ion is exchanged for a hydrogen ion. And when that same water passes over the negatively charged anion resin, the negatively charged chloride ion is exchanged for a hydroxyl ion or OH negative. The hydrogen, which is H plus, and the hydroxyl ion, which is OH negative, join back together forming pure H2O. So what does DI resin then exactly filter out? Well, for example, the positively charged cation resin attracts the positively charged ions in water such as calcium, magnesium, and sodium, while the negatively charged anionic resins attract those negatively charged ions such as fluoride, chloride, and sulfate. Episode 4's word of the week, RODI filtration. All we're going to do in this video is take the Marine Depot Clean Water 4-Stage Advanced RODI filter and upgrade to 200 gallons per day, add two additional DI resin containers, install the auto shutoff float valve kit, clean the shed, find the studs, drill the holes, attach the wood, mount the filter, install the auto shutoff valve, install the float valve, attach the uniseal, rinse the barrel, size the tubing, cut the tubing, and test the system. So we can go from a cluttered, unmounted, 100 gallon per day RODI system to this. To do this project yourself, here's what you'll need. The links are below. The MD Clean Water 4-Staged Advanced RODI Filter. The MD Clean Water 200 Gallon Per Day Upgrade Kit. The SpectraPure Max Cap 2-Stage Add-On Kit. The SpectraPure Auto Shutoff Valve Float Kit. RO Tubing and RO Cutters. A 1 half inch Uniseal Bulkhead. A Utility Pump with Flexible Tubing and a Plastic Hose Clamp. A Stud Finder, Measuring Tape, and a Pencil. A Drill and Drill Bits. And whatever mounting hardware you'll need for your setup. The first thing I'm going to do is install the MD 200 gallon per day upgrade, which basically means I'm going to be adding a second RO membrane, you're taking the wastewater from the first RO membrane, and you're recycling it through the second membrane. That way you can get more clean water out of that dirty water. Thank goodness I took a picture of the old system before I installed the new system or I would be lost. It's really quite confusing. <laughs> Water starts with the sediment filter to the carbon filter. From the carbon filter, it takes this yellow line here and it goes up to this junction, which then goes to the pressure gauge, continues down the yellow line, it goes into the auto shutoff valve. From the auto shutoff valve, it goes through here and it goes into the first. RO membrane, travels down the RO membrane, the clean water comes in into this Y, and the dirty water goes back up and into the input for the second RO membrane, continues down, the clean waters join in this Y, they go through here, I've attached one of the inline TDS meters to measure when the efficacy of the RO filter stops, goes through the auto shutoff valve, and the clean water line goes down into the first DI resin canister, and the wastewater has a control valve so you can flush the RO membranes and this will go out to the waste. Next we gotta drill the hole for the float valve and we need a half inch. So it's this one right here. have the clean water four stage, which is gonna have to go like up here and then the two stage below it. So let's measure, find the studs, drill the holes and get this bad boy mounted. I need to invest in some sort of power tools, especially on a 107 degree day. Screw this. The moment you realize it's battery powered. going to start on the bottom and then mount the top. I just need to be able to find the studs in the stucco and then I just need to make sure I put enough space between the bottom and the barrel so that I can unscrew the canisters and replace the media. There's 
no stud there. No stud there. We got one stud. We're halfway there. I could only find that one stud, which means this portion here is attached to a stud with two screws, but this side over here is not. So I may need to upgrade my screw eventually to a masonry screw so that it can really grind into that stucco. Halfway there, now it's time to mount the MD Clean Water Advanced on the top. See this here? Look at that. I get these crummy screws and they just snap off, but it's not just one, it's both of them. So now I'm not gonna be able to center it. I'm gonna have to screw another hole over here, which means it will be just off center, but oh well. Install both the clean water four stage and the two stage upgrade DI resin. Now we just need to drill a hole in the 50 gallon drum to install the Uniseal, install the utility pump and the flexible tubing, and then finish with the RO tubing, attach it to the faucet. I drilled the wrong size hole. I really only had two options. I had this one inch option and then this either like one and a half or two inch. So obviously the two inch was so clearly not even close. No, it's, just, it's just not gonna fit. So now I think I'm stuck carving out as carefully as I can on the inside. What I just need to do is just buy the right tools. I think I might be able to fit it through now. Let's try it. Come on. Oh. Oh. So close, come on. Get, oh yeah, come on, come on. Aha, woohoo! Uniseal, ah, done. I have a huge mess, look, just look at the mess. So I'm gonna clean all this up and then all we have left to do is just rinse out the barrel because it has a bunch of plastic in there, install the RO tubing to the faucet and then test it. connected let's see if it works uh, I forgot one thing here's Glender Whoop. it's actually okay that's just the output line so if I change this uh, I self detach some tubing there really now we're just checking for leaks I don't see any leaks here look in the back no leaks we have one more test and that's to see if the shutoff is working so theoretically when I lift this up the water should trickle to a stop, and not only that, but this water as well should stop. So, you ready? Let's try. Okay, that water stopped. Is that water gonna stop? And it's looking like I installed it incorrectly, so I'm gonna have to go back and troubleshoot. Well, good news, I have it done. It's set up correctly. I thought it was wrong. I spent the last hour and a half, two hours, redoing everything up here because I thought I had it wrong, but I didn't have it wrong. The thing was, in order to make this stop the dirty water line is you have to lift it up, but then you have to build up back pressure in every single DI resin container. So can you see that? The water has to fill all the way to the top and then, and only then, will the wastewater shut off. So it's working, it's great. <sighs> Well, this is Matthew with That Reef Show, my first fish tank working with Marine Depot. This shirt was completely soaked 10 minutes ago. That means it's just too hot out here. So enjoy this video montage before, after, whatever you want to call it, while I go inside and have something cool to drink. Happy reefing. MD four stage, the Spectre add no two stage, the Spectre cap add on two cap add on.
two stage. The Spectra Pure Max Cap two stage add on kit. For some reason, that one was really hard to say. Fail number one. We're able to. Oh my god! Ah, metal! The barrel. Entering the crate, entering the quality wall, what do you call it? A uh, container, entering the, entering the barrel. I don't know what the hell you call it. Barrel, barrel, crate. I did it! This segment is, no. Depending, depending, depending on the, depending on the, depending on the. Point number three.